are here to tell the world just who we are. Shocking females, cause we are superstars. Are you ever going to try to make it over here and actually see a professional game someday? Absolutely, mate. I, I, I will be seeing uh, somewhat of the upcoming season. I'll be there. But when does it start? September. September. You get preseason uh, in August, and then you have, I don't know when the first game ends. Usually it's the first week, uh, the week before, I want to say Labor Day. I could be lying. So, I don't know. It could be the first week or second week of September. I'm not sure that I'll get there for the first game. I'd love to, but I'm not sure I will. Um because I've got commitments here and stuff like that. But of course. Yeah, no, I'll be there. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I'll be there. You're going to be a, C for a, 40, sure. a 49ers game? When do the 49ers play the Packers? <laughs> oh, see. You, Is that a good game? I mean, oh, I don't, I don't, I, honestly, that's I, another I thing. I got no allegiances just yet. So. Well, the thing, the thing is, is that the, the league, well, they're both NFC teams, so they probably play, do they play every year? Because what happens is the, the divisions will shift every year, so sometimes you don't play teams for four years. Yeah, so what is the NFC? It's like an East versus West. So you have okay. um, yeah. two, two conferences just like the NBA? Just like the yeah. NBA, just like, just like oh, every sport. They've got five, don't they? <laughs> Do they? No, no. Well, no, we have, four, we have two conferences, and then, we have two, and then we have divisions, four divisions. Five okay. divisions. Yeah. Four divisions? Yeah. Whatever it is. I think it might be five. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think it's five. Yeah. We have uh, AFC, NFC. No, four. North, South, East, and West. Duh. Yeah. Four. <laughs> but. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's a, so there's a lot to pick from. There's 32 teams. Is that is That's that correct. Right? Yes. It has to be an even number of teams. Split into conferences. We have the AFC and NFC, the, which play in the championship together. Um, but they play obviously, and every four, every year, um, the an AFC and NFC conference will shift. So the East NFC East might play the AFC East one year, and then they won't play again for another four years. You know, okay. so that that's how that works. But you always play, right. um, you always play everybody in your own division twice. So like the right. pa the Patriots have known to be so good that they kind of beat everybody in their the East division. Uh, in, 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 with no contest, so it was kind of silly, you know. And God bless them for being that good and you know beating the odds on that one. But it's I'm even why as a, is that, why are they so good? Who's who's uh, what is it? Is it Tom Brady or is it is it the whole team? It's Tom. No, it's not the whole team. It's Tom Brady and the coach. That's it. It's the only con the only constant for the last eighteen years is those in the owner, obviously. But yeah, they they're like they. I mean, I don't know if you know anything about salary cap and all that stuff. No. Yeah, we had the same the same thing in the in the um, the teams over here, rugby teams and that. So the, we developed a salary cap back in the mid '90s to avoid the fact that teams like the 49ers, you watch like you know the Jerry Rice and the Joe Montana, you know those games back then. But they were able to keep all those players year after year after year because they could pay them. So now yeah. they developed, and so those are the same teams like them and the Cowboys were always winning all the time. So. Um, to avoid that, they came up with a salary cap so teams would be forced to have free agency in the salary cap so players could go out and shop themselves, make more money for other teams and whatnot. And the, um, What's the salary cap? Do you know? Uh, every, every team's different based uh, off. Of, there, but there is a cap, but each team's opening an amount that they spend. It's, it's, that's way above. Like every year it goes up, and I don't know. It's one of those things that the finances I don't understand because what happens is you'll hear a player get paid this record amount of money, but they still have this amount of money under the salary cap because of the way they structure the contract. It's just like so it doesn't make sense to me at all. It's the math on it is confusing because they'll like they'll get twenty million guaranteed, and then the rest of it's broken down so they can fit under the salary cap. Ugh. It's... Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't know how that works, but I'm getting a, an idea of it. Well, to put it into perspective, mate, the um the salary cap for the top the top rugby provincial teams would be, I mean, I'm guessing this. I'd have to look it up, but I'd say no more than five million. Oh, what? For the half team. How many players? Yeah, how many players are on a team? Well, there's 15 on the field. You have got seven reserves, uh, depending on whether it's union or rugby. But yeah, there's probably I don't know. There might be 50 players in total in the in the squad. And then 22 play each week in a rugby union game, and 17 play each week in a rugby league game. 
So, yeah. I mean, as I said, the top guys, there might be two or three superstars in the team earning anywhere from 500 to a million. What's that? Two million dollars out of the five, and then you've got all the other players that just. But can you go live down from there? I mean, yeah. You might, can you live well with it, with work playing on those teams though and making that money? I mean, you can yeah, live man. well. Yeah, so. Are you going to invest your money, or are you going to go and bet it away? No, I mean, you know if, I mean? yeah, that's a good point. But I mean, it's like here, do you make that money? You consider this and that, and you got to live up to it, and blah 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 blah. And it's a little ridiculous. And is it like that there, where you're pressured to have a look and a style and be a certain way? Nah, I don't think so. I think that people would. Um, I don't think people really delve deep into the salaries and stuff. I I do because I'm interested in it, but. People just watch them and don't really think about it, I think. And, and and when they do, like, if I was a star rugby player, if I was early in my career, I would be looking at football, man. Just, for, just I mean, if nothing else, the, the financial aspect, setting yeah. up my family for life, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's um, it's lucrative. <laughs> no, it's like baseball. It's exactly like baseball, you know, when you when you see yeah. what these – in baseball – I don't know that these guys believe in themselves, man. You know, you... even even the top top rugby players, I don't know that they actually believe that they could make it, and it's probably because they haven't done what I've done and delved deep into the sport and understood the mechanics and things like that. Um, but you know, I mean, you know Jared Hayne, right? Have you heard of Jared? Yeah, Hayne? yeah, yeah, yeah. What a story! I mean, if if I if I ever get interviewed and asked who inspired you to actually start all this to look into football, it was Jared Hayne. Okay. He was. An amazing story to follow. Unfortunately, he left. I, I don't know the exact reasons why, but I mean, what a guy, what a, what a story. He made it, mm -hmm. sort of. Um, he's got some highlight videos on, on NFL, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, well, he did pretty well when he was, um, he was a good story out here. I mean, it was a small story, but it was a story. You know, when he, when he did play, well, and I didn't remember. had on the back, you know, he was the fifth highest um, selling T-shirt at one point. Like, that's, that's crazy. There is a, um, you know? there is a, <laughs> There is a player that who who's on the Patriots who played on the um who plays American rugby for in the he played in the Olympics last year or whatever year it was, and um I don't know if you want to look him up. Nate Ebner played and he's a he's a oh, rugby yes, player who plays have, football. I've been told to look him up. And I yes, will. I've commented on that several times on your um on your videos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, because he did both. I don't know if you ever find. I never looked anything up. I don't know if you ever find anything, but um. He's the only. He's the one I know that, as far as you know, the reverse of whatever it is you're looking at, you know. And the Patriots even took a practice off to watch him in the Olympics um, play, which is, if you know the Patriots, that's not a very common thing to do. Um, but you know, they're very big on supporting their teammates and stuff like that. As much as people say they hate playing for the team. Um, what position does he play in um, football? He's on special teams. You know what special teams like the punt team, the kick team. So he yeah. basically charges yeah. down the field in. Tackles people. Is he a gunner? No, he's not a gunner, but he's probably just inside the gunner because he's not that fast. Okay. But yeah, he's he's. I know basically... what a gunner is now. Like, oh. <laughs> I know. I think most people know the, the the gunners, the kickers, and that's probably about it. In the in the um the the, the receivers because the gunners are just. Wait, but if you're a gunner, right? If you're a gunner, I, I can imagine this happening every time. You're sprinting down. He grabs the ball. He gives you one juke, and you're right past him. Yep. You know. Yep. Is that? Kind of what happens? That's typically what sometimes. happens, yeah. Not sometimes. <laughs> that's typically what happens. And, well, the rule changes. The kickoffs are very rare to have anyway. But with punting, it's different. Um, punting, because the formation's different. Because you set up a, in a punt formation, you basically set up like a regular offensive play, except you have, you know, because um, you have basically two guys flanked out as receivers and, you know, your, your kickers, your punters further back, obviously. But you can also set that up to be a regular – you know, basic yeah, you passing can, play. You can fake it, right? And do something else. Yep, absolutely. You know, you yeah. could probably look up the the, 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 the best fl flops in um, horrible punting plays ever, and there's some funny-ass plays. <laughs> like, seriously, there's some terrible plays, and there's some creative ones. I think the, um, the Indianapolis Colts against the Patriots had the worst uh, in history, probably the worst, I don't know, punts. Well, the worst punts fourth down whatever oh if you ever watch it you won't even know like you could watch it and whatever you're thinking is what we were all thinking and you can hear it with the announcers what they're thinking it's the most <laughs> terrible play oh, set up it, it was a mickey mouse play i don't know if you're familiar with the term mickey mouse play and uh, not yet. it's a terminology used it was mostly it was a lot used in the 80s and 90s when, when i played 
and it was, it's used when it's like you take this obscene like setup where you'll put like one guy on the ball, another guy behind you, and the rest of the line will be to the left or the right, and you don't know what they're gonna do. So you gotta the defense is gonna set up for that, and then you know everybody will run into regular formation and do a field goal, or whatever. It's just like it's just a, considered a Mickey Mouse play. Michigan. Okay. Michigan college football had run a couple of them like that. They were actually kind of successful. They're very strange. They'd do like this train setup. Where they'd line up like three or five guys behind like the center, and you didn't know what was going on. And <sighs> look up trick plays if you ever get the, the mood. Look up look up trick plays in football, and you you'll see like one of my next videos, man. Yeah, it's... it definitely is. I've got sent a screenshot from one of the videos, um, the best trick plays, and just like you say, they. I don't think it was five people. I literally think it was the whole entire team. It might have been. It uh, might have been, yeah. Lined up behind the center. I don't know what's going to happen. Don't tell me. I don't either. <laughs> the Aussie, I forget. I still watch them sometimes being like, I got to see these yeah. again because I can't believe some of them because, you know, you'll see like, um, you'll see the um, the Fumble Ruski, which is an illegal play now. Um, you'll see the fake, uh, the fake uh, uh, Spike, which was um, Dan Marino made famous. Yeah. Um, yeah, the fumble. it's gonna be good. Yeah, it, it's fun. It, it's it's fun because as long as you follow the rules of football, having X amount of guys on the line, X amount of guys off the line, you can do anything, you know. And that's yeah. essentially what it is. And like you'll see, like you saw the refrigerator, you know, get the touchdown. So you know when you make eligible certain guys eligible. If you want to see something that's really confusing, watch the, the Patriots versus the Ravens, where the Patriots confuse the absolute shit out of them, based off of uh rule that no one really paid attention to that it's never really that's only been done like once before that year in college football and yeah. you know to help them win the game literally in baltimore ravens coaches and everything said they were cheating and all this stuff and they weren't because in all all they said was tom brady said the press conferences they got to study the playbook a lot more you know because like that's how that's that it, it was insane it is. It, it's just like, but when you look up those type of plays and, like, you know, we react to them and, like, how, like, you, you just be, like, you're mind blown. Because you're, like, when you exp when they explain it to you, you're, like, what the hell just happened? Because nobody knows. Like, nobody. Because yeah. they can s assume. But when you pull something out of, like, you know, like a flea flicker. You know what a flea flicker is? When you hand off the ball, uh, they toss it back to the quarterback. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know? I've seen one of those, yeah. Yeah, then you have, yes. like, a halfback pass type of thing where, like, you know, you throw to a wide receiver. Like, you'll see one if you ever look it up, maybe. Um, the, you know, Tom Brady throws to Julian Edelman, which you need to do a Julian Edelman video, by the way, if you want to see scrappy little um, slot receivers who are about, who about your size. <laughs> Oi, a few people have said the only person I, I, I sort of, they can um, relate me to being a, a white wide receiver in my size and stuff is Julian Edelman. And the first time I saw him was in the, the highlights of that Super Bowl game that I watched. So okay. um, I'll have to have another look. At yeah, it. they call him the sure. squirrel. Um, okay, how tall is he? You know, he's. Uh, <laughs> I think if you be, if you're being nice, five ten. Oh, okay. He looked taller for some reason. Yeah, no, no, oh, he's he's really not like he. Um, but he's got a good story though in general because he was a quarterback in college. He was picked in the seventh oh. round, and he um he converted because in the Patriots they they literally you had mentioned this in one of your videos actually. Do players play multiple positions or on either side of the ball? And in the Patriots, it's very well known that you could play anywhere. It doesn't matter. You know, he was one point, like, we had so many injuries, he was the backup quarterback and still being the slot receiver. Um, so, like, they had him do a, a, a – his only pass he's ever made, I think, at that time was um, because they he wanted to do it for so long and they wouldn't let him. And then he, it was, a, it was a touch, like a 50-yard touchdown pass that he had done to Danny Amendola. And um, that's in that Baltimore game that I was telling you about where he's confusing everybody. Um, okay. The um, – the, uh, what the hell was I going to say with this? He um, – I can't remember what I was going to say. Well, yeah, so he was, <laughs> yeah, so he was – like I said, he was a quarterback, and he was just do whatever. And with the Patriots, they had a play at uh, – what's his name? Brown, whatever. Um, he was a, a forever Patriot, but he played in one game – he was the only player, oh, the first player in like, I don't know, 50 years who had uh, an interception and a reception in the same game because he went and played defense and against uh, against um, uh, the San Diego Chargers in a playoff game. And the San Diego Chargers didn't take him seriously. They're like, wow, they're really running out of plays. They got Troy Brown playing uh, nickel over there. And he was back there. He intercepted yeah. the ball while he was back there. 
You know what I mean? So yeah, nice. yeah, it's like the things like that are just like, you know, you literally have to play whatever you can play. And the Patriots are very, very well known for being multifaceted and putting anybody anywhere. They had a tackle catching a touchdown pass. They've had linebackers catching touchdown passes. You know, and Super Bowls and all sorts of things. Yeah. You know? I've had yeah, I've really had to change the like shift the way my mind works as far as, uh, you know, what type of player as far as body weight and size suits a certain position because coming from rugby, you know, um, well, I mean, basically your fastest guys you're going to have on attack or in the the skill positions like you say, um, but in football, uh, it could be the safety is the fastest guy on the field, right? Or, or a cornerback or yeah, usually the something cr- like yeah, that. something like you've that. Got yeah. to, you've got to you've got to you've got to match those those. Uh, skill positions from the, the offense so yeah it's yeah it's it's well it's pretty typical it's, is this if you are the, the saying is this if a cornerback could catch it'd be a wide receiver so you'll see a lot of cornerback misses missing interceptions you know that's a, that's a, a saying that's there and if they were tall enough with the exception of I forget who we what who is them on uh, another brown browner uh blah, 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 whatever he, he uh brendan browner he, i believe he um he was six four which is very rare for a D-back to be 6'4". The D-backs are usually six feet and about it, you know, and going against yeah. guys who like Randy Moss is, and it was 6'4", and like speed yeah. demons. Yeah. That's why those guys are uncoverable. But then you have little guys like um, like like uh, Revis, who was about your size, and no one, and he can cover, he could cover anybody in his prime, you know, or even prime time, who was uh, Deion Sanders, which I still don't think he's the best cornerback in the league. I don't know why people keep crying about him being the best cornerback ever. You know, a guy couldn't tackle if his life depended on it. Look up a tr- – try to try to find a Deion Sanders tackling video. you never find one because he never tackled anybody. Okay. He was too yeah. scared to get hurt. Okay? So that's my – that's always my argument against him, by the way. <laughs> so I am a hater of Deion Sanders. Um, well, I was just going to talk about Deion Sanders being one of my favorites so far. Oh, no, I can that understand. Was... But you like the action. You like the movement. But as far as a pure football yeah, player, yeah. tackle a son of a bitch. You know what I mean? But you've got to be able to tackle, don't you? Yeah. On D. Yeah. So, yeah. like, he, you know, so he, his whole idea was not to because he was too pretty and too athletic and had too much to go for him, which is fine. You know, if that works for him and he became one of the best in the Hall of Famer, so be it. But I like tough, rugged, you know, guys are going to play. If you watch the, like – yeah, you never watch a lineman. I I understand that because there's nothing exciting about a lineman to watch. I, I can totally get it. But if you know, man. if you know. ever do, you have he doesn't play anymore. But he's probably the the greatest lineman who ever played. His name is John Hanna. If you ever want to get an idea of what a lineman's supposed to do, all right, he's known as probably the H A N N A H. Okay, he played for the New England Patriots back in the '80s. This guy was brutal. Brutal. Like you can see him, people running behind him. He they had the the the, the leading uh, run, uh, rushing yards that that year. The Patriots. They weren't even good, but they they did rush for like something ridiculous, like three thousand yards that year. But watching him block as a guard, running out and blocking one guy, and then running up and blocking the next guy. He just had to follow him. He go from one guy to the next guy to the next guy and just destroy people. You know, he still lives here. He coaches football out here somewhere. Um, that couple of towns over or used to, but um. Yeah, he's another like well, I position. Say, I will say I have looked at. Um, well, you know, I've got a few videos. I, it's, it's about time I post one. To be honest, we'll have to make a decision. Um, I'll ask you. I'll okay. ask you a, a, about five different ones. You can tell me which one you want me to post. Okay. But the first look I've, I've uh, looked at an offensive lineman and defensive lineman has been their combined forty-yard dashes. <laughs> <laughs> so How fun is that? that? <laughs> Oh. Hey man, I've got to give them some love somewhere. That was it. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. So that's but what. Yeah. That's the next one you're gonna post. So I've got the fastest and the slowest <laughs> offensive lineman and defensive lineman. Well, if so. you want to, you, if you want to get impressive though, you get to go watch show their benching, the 225 benching. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, that would be next level, man. But These um, 30 reps, 30 reps. That's crazy. Oh, it's that a, is crazy, man. What's the most? I, I could never do that. What was the most you've ever done? What on two hundred? How much is it? Two twenty or two twenty-five pounds? It's two twenty-five. Would that be like two twenty? For the bench press. Yeah, for the bench. Well, two twenty-five is one hundred and two kilos. So if it's a hundred, that's two twenty. But um, the most, geez, bench press has always been my weakest lift. Um, I've done seven reps. Really? On a hundred? Yeah, See, yeah, man. No, nah, it's yeah, yeah. For whatever reason. My best was um, eight, was eighteen, right? And I thought that was terrible, 
and say this is for years. I never thought anything of it because I lift by myself, and I never lift. I don't like lifting with people, especially because I lift. Yeah. I lift in bare feet, and people like think that's weird. And um, so I always lifted by myself, and I lifted my feet on the bench because I have a really bad back. I heard from deadlifting, so I benched. I did it um, 18 times. A few years later, a friend had asked me, what's the most you ever bench 225 for? I go, 18. He's like, really? So I didn't really pay attention to combine stuff because it wasn't on TV. I'm like, oh, I guess that was pretty good. Because I benched 225 when I was 14. So it wasn't a big deal to me because I thought that's what everybody did because I didn't know any better. you know. And that was like because that's the way yeah. I had developed myself as a strength coach and trained myself you know, as an athlete to, to be like that. You know, so yeah. like I was just, it was common for me. I got it. Well, I guess the way people's mechanics are, are, are made up, way, the way their bodies, you know, designed, I've got quite long arms. So I think to, to, you know, extend like that, bring it all the way back down, then touch my chest, yeah. extend all the way back up. It, it takes a lot of effort just to get one rep out. But yeah. I mean, that's, that's just an excuse. I have put a lot more effort into my deadlift. Oh, there you um, go. I, yeah, back has been my my strongest muscle group throughout my lifting. Mine life. was too. Uh, yeah, but like yeah. My, so even though deadlift. even though I had a um, I hurt my back doing deadlift. And it was uh, very dangerous. I still loved it, but um, hand clean the power cleans and bench were my big thing. I didn't bench with my chest. I benched with my back. My back was huge. My chest was never super <laughs> strong. Does that make? I mean, I, you you don't understand that the mechanics behind that. It still engages the lats if you're doing a bench. That's bench. why my back. I mean, my, all my yeah. t-shirts were always rolled over in the back because my back was so wide from benching you know and i yeah. i'm a, I, I and i love the lap pull down machine those those were my favorite i hate i don't care how about benching now what's that how many pull-ups with your body weight none no i can do three that's <laughs> i can do three i can do three but it's funny though because now that you bring that up i'm doing i can't I, i'm i'm trying not to do weights anymore and it's been, I had a very rough year last year where I couldn't work out and I had um, injuries and I had an issue going on with a friend of mine uh, addicted to drugs and stuff that I was trying to not let die, you know, so it took up a year of my life. So I couldn't do anything. And then, um, so I was just like, I'm going to try and a training program without lifting weights. So I'm trying to do more calisthenic style of training, even though I'll never do calisthenics, but pull-ups are huge on that. And the training for calisthenic pull-ups changed the game for me. I don't know if you've ever looked into it, but... It like for someone my size to all of a sudden be able to train and do pull ups with like you know within ten pull ups within two weeks of training and never doing pull ups like training pull ups was phenomenal because the technique behind pull ups I never knew existed never thought about it never cared about it never came into training for me and yeah. you should look it up on yeah believable look up this guy it's um it's yeah, called you do another human flagpole and bloody yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. It, it's impressive. It really is. It, it, I'm it, sure it would take a lot of training. Oh, but. It's, it's but just to, but the technique behind it, like something like that, would blew my mind. You know, so look it up. Like this guy um, from Miami. His um, I don't know his name, but uh, his training program is called Then X. And um, so I go, I look under his stuff, and he has an app that's inexpensive that I, I use. And um, so I I learned to build that into when I was training my athletes and stuff. You know, breaking down the positions and everything, I was able to do that and break all those things down. Like when you deadlift, like do you do sumo deadlift or just regular deadlift? No, no, I never have. You never I do never sumo. Have. I don't like sumo. It's that, that's more legs for me, man. Yeah. And deadlift, I always wanted to target my back, mm-hmm. especially you know, with bodybuilding and hypertrophy style training. I wanted to get out of the gym with my back completely fucked and my legs not used because I want to go and do squats in the next day or something okay. like that. So yeah, it's been conventional for me. What about you? Um, I was just a standard deadlifter, but that's why my back had, had, had a lot of problems because that was my Hercules moment was, it was always deadlifting. You know that. I mean, it, it's just like you, when you feel that you can pull that weight, it's just a, one of the greatest feelings in the world. And I, like I said, I lift by myself. That's what happened to me. And I had nobody watching my form and I fucked it up bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, it's, it's. Different bodies are different, different man, with form. You know, I've, originally I was telling, sort of trying to tell people that this, this form's the way to go and that's it. But the more I've trained, the more people I've trained with and the more I learn, um, not necessarily every movement, everyone's going to do the same way, you know. It's a, a bench press with a barbell might not suit your body. You don't have to do it. True. If you want to build a chest, you don't have to do a bench press. You know? But, I mean, 
But um, with that being said, I think the biggest indicator of muscle growth is strength growth. So if you yeah. want to get stronger, it's going to increase your, your muscle mass over time. But you've got to, you've got to eat as well, don't you? That's my that's biggest problem. That was always my so. biggest problem. Like you broke yours down. I've, I've, I don't look at much diet stuff anymore because – for me, I've never had a problem developing muscle. I know it sounds like an arrogant thing to say and it pisses a lot of my skinny friends off, but it's the truth. I can gain muscle a lot quicker than most people can. So, I, But I, what happens is I eat, I'm so hungry from working out, I'll eat whatever. And so not till recently have I, my brother started, my brother's a marathon runner, so he like, he, I get the diet stuff from him more than anything because he break, he likes the simple stuff. So I do more like the like the keto type of stuff without the carbs and without the um, without the sugars and stuff because that's stuff I don't need anyway. I mean I'm old, so I don't need those things in my body anyway. You know when when, when you start reaching forty, you're like, uh, you know your body can't handle something. How old are you? Do you want to tell me? Thirty nine. Okay, gotcha. And um, so like my when I hit thirty five, and my training had to change because I was my shoulders are junk. My one shoulder is torn. I got my elbow, I believe, is torn. You know, so I had to start changing those things, and you know, so diet's a lot involved in that. So I had to, I have to learn to. I want to get down to two, probably two thirty-five, two forty, which would be really pushing it for my frame, considering my size. Um, but I'd really like to try to do that, you know, and and see. So I'd like to get up to two forty. That would be amazing. <laughs> I'll, I'll trade you any day, brother, for real. <laughs> I'll lose it. You can find it. I'll tell you where it is. Like, it's just been, it's been, like, I've never had that problem at all. I've always been able to build muscle mass, no problem. It's all come from um, from athletic lifting, all of it. You know, and I can jump back into it and I can do it, no problem. Well, and that's 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 genetics. I mean, if anyone wants to say that genetics aren't important, they oh, don't God, determine yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, so the, first, I mean? the first thing um, I told anybody I trained, I go, you, genetics is, 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 is going to play a key part in it. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> especially in bodybuilding. I mean, I don't know if you followed too much bodybuilding. I've, I've been a bodybuilding fan, um, and you know, I've I've trained bodybuilding, but I've never really thought of myself as a bodybuilder. Uh, so, but I, I'm definitely a fan of it. So to see, you know, the different physiques, see the different training styles, all that stuff. Genetics is huge, um, and yeah. As far as how can you how, how you can develop your body, the shape of it, how fast you put on muscle, how easy you can lose fat, it's all genetic. I mean, I've made videos in the past about certain um, you know guidelines that I try and give people as far as numbers and what to do, but it's definitely going to be an, on an individual basis. It is, it is, and that's why. Like even when I trained my kids, I had I kept a board up of all the kids, and they recorded what they did, and I had every week I'd have to adjust it and tell them what their goals were for every week. And you'd see these amazing gains from some kids, and you'd see, like, struggles from other ones. And I told yeah. – and, and the kids would be like, oh, my God, he's doing this and that. And I was just like, you got to understand, he's going to hit that soon, but he hasn't done anything. You've been training for three years. He's been training for three months, you know, and he's not going to be what you're doing. Like, it, you got to break it down and see that stuff. Like, look at me. Like, I can't go much further. You know, like, I made goals for myself for, like, I wanted to get the 405 for bench. I did it. I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. You know what I mean? I did the same thing with like I love um, cl uh, clean and jerks, but yeah, I just what two four oh five? Yeah. No way, dude! Yeah. You're like the way you your frame and your build. I had a buddy who was about who's smaller than me and probably like a uh, like an anorexic looking version of you, but he could bench like a motherfucker. It was unbelievable. I don't know how he did it. You'd never guess, but he could. You know, and I, yeah. I, you, but you, you say you, but you don't have a uh, you might not have a mentality for it. Some people just don't like it. Maybe. You know, and I Maybe. think that's really what it comes down to. I had to break it down to mechanics in being that my age, I was such, it was such a tough guy thing to do in the 90s was benching, you know, so I had to yeah. prove myself because people hated me in high school when I was younger. So I had to prove to myself that I could, I could stand with them and that was my way to do it, you know, and like I, so I set those goals and then when I, with the, um, you know, when I was doing um, uh, jerks, I 240 for five was the most I wanted to do. Because I don't really, there's no reason to me to put more than 250 pounds over my head, and it, that was the goal I met, and I did it. You know what I mean? So I started doing that and stuff, and then you know now I'm kind of winding it down, winding it down. But the transformation is harder. So I, I don't know. I, bodybuilding's never been my thing to look into. I've always appreciated it. Pumping yeah. iron was the greatest single weightlifting movie <laughs> ever made. 
you know, and very inspiring, you know, but I can't, the training for it doesn't work for me. Does that, you know what I mean? It doesn't fit my... Well, the vibe, the vibe, I mean, the vibe isn't like what it was shown in that video anymore either. No. You know? That was an awesome vibe, man. Yeah. I would have loved to be. Oh, and imagine? Training with bare feet, like you say, I train in socks, man. I hate training in shoes. I hate, hate sneakers. It. Hate it. Yeah, man. Uh, so I train in socks. Um, everyone gives me shit for it, but uh, <laughs> thank God, touch wood, I haven't <laughs> dropped a weight on my toe. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, shoes don't don't mix with me. So, yeah, now bodybuilding's been huge. Uh, I've got to be honest, though, the last two months, I, I don't know if you've seen, but on my YouTube channel, before all this NFL stuff, I did a 12-week uh, cut, a 12-week diet. So I came down from about 220 pounds to about... 200 in okay. 12 weeks and I, doc I documented the whole thing um all the progress pictures everything like that and and so hopefully you know if someone wants to uh i guess follow my journey from you know dropping 10 kilos in, in 12 weeks it's possible and but but the thing is is that i sort of burnt myself out man and since i've started these nfl videos and that i've kind of i've let it go a bit i really have so I, i've got to get back in the gym i'm sitting at about 200 pounds right now my my natural weight, I like to be at least 210. Okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and especially with the football thing, man, I feel like I can definitely get up to something like 220 pounds with the same speed as I have now. So that Ooh. that's the goal that I want to get to. So, That'd yeah. be a rough one. I used to tell my kids, like, they're like, I want to be this size and that size. I go, all right, here you go. I give them, um, I give them 20 pounds, either a 20-pound dumbbell or 20 pounds worth of uh, – with of um, weights, and I'd go put these in your backpack, have fun, walk around school all day, see how that feels, buddy. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh man, yeah." You know, yeah. it's I go, it's a huge yeah, anything difference. About 20, that's me, but, yeah. Well, it starts wearing on your joints, is what it is, and that's where it's become my problem. You know, like yeah. I can't do like I, I, my weight fluctuates from two sixty five to um, literally like two ninety. You know, depending on what my training is, and like. I like I, at 290. I was doing things at 265, which lo and behold, it ended up being like a, a, a death wish for my my joints. You know, I, I I blew up my elbow trying to do explosive push-ups at 285. That's ridiculous. I'm 20 pounds more, but I wouldn't think of it that way. You know, that's heavy, man. That's <laughs> well. People say that's I carry heavy. it pretty well. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm, I guess yeah. I'm fortunate that way. You know, because I can still maintain a 42 inch waist at at 280 pounds. So. But that's why I want to drop 40 pounds and kind of get there. I haven't done it in a long time, and I need a new challenge. I'm not with the kids yeah, anymore. Man. I'm not coaching. You know what I mean? I see your videos, and that's actually giving me more. It's pushing me more to challenge myself in, in a, back in a different way. And it's awesome, man. Like, when I see, like, I don't want to, like, I don't, I'm not going to go out and play rugby. I'm not going to go play football. I'm not going to do anything athletic as far as a team sport. But when I see, like, I, I broke down again, your steps, I like that type of training. Like, how can I maneuver that way? You know, I want to be yeah. the guy who's 250 pounds and can maneuver like that, you know, I, just naturally. You know, I'm never going to get chased by the cops again. Those days are over. But I want to think if that ever happened, I want to be able to do that. You know, it's a yeah. stupid th thing to think about. But when I, it, like seeing that again, you know, and somebody who, like, like I said, who has the same mentality as far as breaking things down as me, like it makes me connect better because I've watched hundreds of thousands of videos on other people training and it just didn't work. You know, it didn't click in my yeah. head because there was something about them that didn't make it genuine, I guess, or not genuine, but like uh, achievable. Somehow yeah. you make me believe it's achievable, you know, and that helps That's what me I a wanted. lot, you know. That's what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to break it down with my analytical mind so that someone who'd never played, who'd never tried it before could at least practice and get better. That's what it was about. And that's right. what I want to try and do. Like I, that's why I enjoy training soccer players so much, for for the sport of soccer was teaching them those type of agility stuff and those drills and showing them that I could do it. If I had to do that again, I don't know if I could do it without falling on the ground, you know, and blowing out a knee, you know. So I want to train myself to get there and do it again. Well, I'm hoping that in the game of football, I can use those to my advantage. You know, when I run the ball, when I, when I, but also being a, a receiver of running routes, I feel like I would use that to get past my my defender and get open. I'm not sure. I'm not, it's obviously not going to be that easy, but I can I can see that happening. Well, you would. So, and when I was watching some of the games, and I was sitting there going, and I then I and I watched some of your videos because I remember seeing the moves once I watched the game. 
And I'm going, how come running backs and receivers don't use those moves? And you literally saying that made me just realize when we are coached and you listen to coaches and you listen to people, how they run routes and whatever else, they are taught to do it a certain way. So if you did that and say you will say hypothetically that you did that, you want to play even a, pl- a practice squad, you got in a practice squad squad situation, and you did that type of thing, you would be bringing something and made it work. You'd be bringing something new to the table in that sense. Like you see rugby players become kickers and running backs, but they don't have the, the opportunity like a wide receiver would to do that or a kick returner would to do that, to, ju- to juke, wiggle a leg, fake one way and fake another way. You know, even if it's you, you, even if you're not gonna lateral the ball, I watched a video of you. What was it, goose stepping or something like that? And you were like, you faked it one way, then you faked it another way. But that's the thing. We're taught to watch the ball, so you're gonna fake that person out. And when you see which way they go, your your body's prepared to go whatever way it's gonna go. You know, so like that's stuff that you don't see people do. You know, and that'd be such an interesting. Even if now this is another thing, like you. I if you ever feel like I know I feel like you'd be a, a great coach for what, what, on whatever level, and like you were talking about um, that Dixon kid from Texas, and he went to that kicking yeah. academy, where you know and okay that's a Perfect. kick yeah and that's a kicking academy. If with you watching these NFL videos now and such like that, if you were fortunate enough and I I think you will be soon to find yourself in a situation where you could actually test that theory. You know, you could probably, and I wouldn't doubt this, bring a new aspect of to these young kids to learn different versions of a sidestep. You know, it's, oh hell yeah, man. you know, oh. I can, like I, obviously I've got no credentials to do that at the moment. But once I start getting into football, if I played a couple of games and stuff, and start using this in the game, first thing I'll do, man, would be how to juke. Yeah, you know how to how to do a, a rugby style sidestep. In a game of football, you know those kind of videos. I, I'm really excited to 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 bring out if if it if it happens, man. If I, it happens, I but think I gotta, I gotta put the pads on. <laughs> we don't even, on. but you don't even necessarily need to do it in pads. You could do it and just show people. Uh, kids will carry it that way. There's a in, in the NBA. I don't know if you really watched like Kyrie Irving or any of those like <clears throat> smaller yeah. guys dribble. You ever see Kyrie Ir- Irving dribble? He puts a sidestep into it as well, right? Yeah. Or like, and, it, 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 oh. it, it, the fake outs oh, with the ball and whatever else. I don't really pay attention. I just kind of, I'm always watching like, uh, you know, I'm not a huge basketball fan, but as far as like knowing a lot about it, I just know what I like to see. And there's a, the, the player that, there's a player who revolutionized that type of dribbling. And I can't remember his last name. It's something God, believe it or not. And he played for Providence College back in the 80s and 90s. He never made the never did well in the pros or made it to the pros or whatnot. But he, that that's his move. Every single NBA player nowadays use that move, and he doesn't. You, you could say he has the credentials because he played for Providence College, but he wasn't a pro. Is my point. You don't need credentials in that way. Look at and one. Look at those things. People see a move, and smart person who's gonna is gonna translate that. You have that ability, and as you grow with your YouTube channel, your clothing line, your 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 training, I think you will find that outlet to be able to do that and expand that and show it to the audience that you're gaining now, which is an American audience, you know, and I would take that, if I ever saw your video when I was in high school, or even in college, but you know, in high school, I would try that, because I, I, I was the asshole who stayed after practice just to learn how to snap the ball better and get off the line quicker by myself, or with one other kid who wanted to do it, and I would try those moves, I would, i go, if, if that why is everybody going to do what Barry Sanders did, you know, because it's not Barry Sanders because he did a double jump, you know, juke, which is like you have to be five foot five to do so hard because his base yeah, was so yeah. strong. But you're a taller guy and yeah. rugby plays out and you're doing it and you're breaking it down. No one ever broke down a fucking, you know, a juke move like that before. Not that I've ever looked at and seen. I love them, man. I, I fucking love them. I, I, That's I, why I do it. I enjoy I it. Them. <laughs> I know I, I see it you know you see and you got me looking for it and you bring in a different you bring in a different view to me that I because it's a position I never played you know or I never I had the opportunity to even you know joke around I, with. I start watching you know I start watching the, the even in the first couple of videos I did I saw the I saw the break by the running back he breaks through 
He's got a def- he's 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 waiting for the defend. He's he's leading him across. He's taking one direction slightly, leading the defender across and banging that step in at the exact right time, not losing any pace and fucking going that way and and going through the seam. Do you guys call it the seam? I'm, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Is we it do. the seam? Yeah. You pick the seam and you get through the two two players coming or whatever and. And uh, you know, I can I can see it. I love calling it. That's why I love saying bang step, bang step <laughs> yeah. around the outside. You know, I love it because I see it happening before it happens because I've seen it in rugby so many times before. Yeah, that's it, why. And it's one. But the, the thing is, it's, I don't know if do they teach that in rugby and like if you're practicing it, is that something they teach you or is it supposed to be a natural no, instinct? I don't think. No, I think it's. I think it's. As a kid, you watch your favorite players on TV. You go and you go to school. You start practicing the steps. Then you you might start putting in a game. I I wasn't taught how to do a sidestep at rugby training as a kid. No way, no. Nah. Like if you could ever nah. find you if you found your way over to the United States during football season and then were fortunate enough to find yourself onto a say a practice field somewhere, you know what I mean? If you mentioned on you on your videos that I'm going to the United States and you know what I mean and you found a way to meet up with a coach or whatever else to go there for a day and teach the running backs and the wide receivers those type of steps, I'd, a that would probably make their day and obviously it would probably make your day. You know, to do that type of thing, you know, because that'd be sure, awesome. I'm, 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 I know, I know the difference. I know the difference between a, a side step, as I'd see it in rugby, and a juke. And it's because you, uh, at, as you come into the step, I don't know if you've seen the McCaffrey college video I did, but I broke down one of the steps, and usually I'd be coming off my my left foot. And in the air, without putting my feet down, be doing a little wobble or a, a wiggle or a shake, and then coming down with my feet. Whereas, whereas if a sidestep in football, it seems like you're taught to keep your feet on the ground. You know, yeah. one, two, three, like small, small steps before that defender t- takes a direction, and then you've got to choose the other direction to uh, to go. So I'm sort of trying to work that out. Yeah, I mean, I you that's I remember you breaking that down and saying that go. I never thought of it that way, but you're right, because you are taught if, to keep your feet. If I could jump in the air, I could, you know, it's, well, it's, it's, it's leaving me open to get hit, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. that's why, that's, like, that's it, it's, 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 it's definitely something that's interesting. I think it should be brought, that this should be brought to some sort uh, of training. Right, man, what, what I will say is that if you don't worry about keeping your feet on the ground and you do take that little jump, what you can do in the air to fake out your defender is a lot more. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, true. It's, but, I suppose it's more so, I'm, I'm sort of talking more so like a, a jump cut, like a side to side sort of yeah. thing where you look, do look jump in the air, but this is at pace and you're not, you're not going um, laterally. You're actually continuing to go forward. Yeah. But, that is yeah. A, yeah. See like th- those type of things, man, that's breaking it down. I mean, if you can get young kids like the hothead to learn that and see that and then do it on them and be like, Oh my God, that worked. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, we're not taught that. Like you said, we're taught to keep like our both feet on the ground and just go. Everything else is natural instinct. You know, no one taught Barry Sanders to do that. That was Barry Sanders who did that. But a lot of running mm-hmm. backs like Le'Veon Bell will sit there and be like, I watched those type of videos and like I watched, you know, him play, you know, I can't say growing up because they're, they're, they weren't even born yet. But, um, you know what I mean? Those type of things. But it, it, it's, I don't know, it's well, an interesting it's thing. It's, if, you, if you grow up in New Zealand, or Australia, and you're watching rugby union and rugby league on a regular basis, you see amazing jukes, amazing sidesteps every single game. And these guys don't have blockers. They're not looking for holes made by blockers. They've got one defender in front of them. They've got, they've got no help from their from their, um, from their their other offensive players, and they've got to get past them one-on-one. And it happens every single game, you know? So you get past him, and then you're looking for – you're not looking for a blocker. That's, that's the, the mental cue that I've got to sort of get in my head. I'm looking for a lateral every single time. I'm looking for my other player to come up on the inside or on the outside. I've got one person in front of me. I'm going to give a little lateral. You know, I'll draw him in and give a lateral. But really, what I have to try and start thinking is that it would, it would be in my best interest to slow down, let my other person get in front of me, take out that guy, and then continue going past. Is that right? That's it. That's the NFL mentality, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Oh uh, yeah, man. <laughs> See, that, well, but that's so, a good. That's what I. I I'm certain that when you were, when you were explaining that, I, 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 in my head, I was literally saying like that's what I noticed, but I didn't know how to word it. But because I don't know the sport well enough, because I just know like I don't. It's hard to watch a sport where you see a lot of people standing around because you're waiting for the ball to move down the field across the field, and I, I, I had to get that out of my head first. Then I realized like you're right. These people are literally bowling through people 
you know, or trying to find this opening and slurry slipping through and like, I, I'm sitting there yeah. going, he's not going to make it. Boom, they, he gets in there. I, I'm like, it, it's mind blowing to me, like the athleticism yeah. involved in everybody from the small guy to the giant guy, fucking mind blowing to me. And that's why well, I enjoy man, watching. I don't, know, I don't know if this has happened in I don't know if this has happened in the, in um, football, but if you look back 50 years to the 70s or the 60s, you see the the type well. The, the physicality of the players that were playing is totally different now, man. Totally different. Well, think, Each, every player on the field is at least 40 pounds more than what they used to be. Oh, that's what it's like in the NFL, and, too, yeah. Yeah. So, it's scary shit. A really. guy like Bo Jackson comes in and, and demolishes everyone. Well, we've got a guy like called Jonah Lomu. And um, I cannot wait. Did you make a video on him? Game. Oh, you didn't do I one? Him, Epic. Why, did I, why, uh, why have I heard of that guy? Um, because I, I've mentioned him in a couple of videos previously. Oh, that might be why. But, um, yeah, he, he's as big as Bo Jackson was, but in New Zealand. So Jesus. Yeah. He's like, a, like as, oh, sorry, I mean as big physically, but also as big as like a, a just a hero for everyone. Really? You know yeah, I mean, I mean if, if Bo so, Jackson never got hurt, man, oh, that would have been yeah, done. Yeah, done. Sucks. You know, but he's doing um. He makes his own bow and arrows right now, so he's doing pretty well for himself anyway. He lives a quiet life. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he does bow hunting, and he makes his own. It's insane. Of course, he's perfect at that, too. He's like the, he's that guy who's, like, perfect at everything. You know what I mean? God bless him, you know? But, like, there was um there was a guy, they did a special on him. He was in high school. He was probably in high school about the size of, probably it was bigger than Bo Jackson, was a running back. And as fast and as athletic, never made it to the pros. But he did, but he got hurt, actually. He made it to the pros, but got hurt. But he could have basically... He, they, he's probably the only guy who could ever have probably played played pros right out of high school. That's how big and athletic yeah, he that's was. The thing that, like, injuries, man. Yep. Injuries. So yep. devastating. Yeah. A lot of people who might get injured in their first or second year, they could have gone on to be in the Hall of Fame, but you'd never know. Yeah, and it's it's a frightening thing. It's like it's almost like you should have a Hall of Fame of of, of uh, short careers. Yeah. Like, you know, like five years or less, you know what I mean, for these type of players because it's like you hear that. You're right. You hear that a lot. And, it, it, and that's – that's something that's that's something I've got to consider injuries you know I don't want to um, I've got to be careful you know I, of course I, yeah so look at my I want fans. to play I want to make the field. <laughs> I don't know where that field's gonna be but so I got to be I got to be careful to um, to not do anything stupid and not injure myself and get myself on that field so I can <laughs> you'll, yeah you'll do it you'll do it before you're 30 I, I'm confident in that that's for sure well, let's 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 look at it. I mean, how could I play? Like, what would be my best option to, to just get into? Like, I could go to a high school practice just to be on that field, see the size of it, feel the ball, you know, talk to a coach. What what would be my best option? Um, I'm going to have to wait until someone asks me. And I'm not going to go out and ask someone. I don't think so. I guess, yeah. What do you think? It, like, as far as um, if you came over here, what your best your best bet yeah, was? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I could just go down to anyone's practice, really, couldn't I? Um, not, like, not, 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 team, but I I'd never do high school because high school rules and over here about that stuff is so regulated because of child molesters uh, okay. and shit. <laughs> that's, that's why I stopped coaching. They need your fingerprints if you're gonna the coach nowadays in high school. So I don't go. That's why I don't. I stopped coaching. I don't want the government yeah. to have my fingerprints. Um, but yeah, that's the truth. Actually, you know what? A, a small college, a college, a Division three college would be your best bet or a junior college. Actually, junior college talent is like Division One talent. Um, would If you could ever find a junior, junior college, which is a really good one, there's really good ones up in the San Francisco area, if that's where you find yourself ending up, or a Division Three college, which is just about every, they have everywhere. Those are your probably best bets. Are these, are, they, are these teams, do they get televised at all or anything? Uh, no, not really. The more regional, if at, if at all, um, or you could do arena football, where they play indoors. They play basically inside like a, a hockey. It's a fifty-yard field they, by twenty yards, I think, and they play inside pads and all. Oh. Um, that'd be another way to look into it. You, you might be able to make one of those. Um, yeah, I don't know. It seems like a very small field. It's tiny. <laughs> it's fast as hell. The scores are insane. Um, you can look yeah. that up. Arena football. That's where a lot of guys, a few guys have played in arena football. Um, who, uh, blah, 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 blah. Kurt, Kurt Warner played arena football in bad groceries too, but and he's a Hall of Famer now. 
Um, but I'm yeah. I have to ask a question. Let's say a wide receiver. I'm thinking that you, basically you never get tired because there's so many stoppages. You're always off and on the field. But if you had, you know, repeat sets for whatever reason and, and the offense stayed on for a particular amount of time and you were a, a wide receiver doing roots every single down, you'd get tired, right? But you're not doing roots every single down unless you're a decoy. What you're doing is when you're right receiver, because if it's first down, you're likely going to do a running play, depending if it's a hurry-up offense or not. Um, it's you, You'd think so. The defense is actually what gets the tired, more tired. On offense, you already know what you're doing. So you know where yeah. you're going. You know how to draw a guy away. So if you're just a decoy in, for the running back and it's going to be a quick one-yard play or whatever else, you're literally just taking f- five steps and calling it a day. You're not sprinting down the field every single time. You're literally just trying to draw one guy away. Um, if it's a hurry up offense or you're like the Patriots and you, when you watch the Super Bowl 51, the, um, you have so much momentum going on your side and your, your, your energy levels up so high in determination to score and get that done. You don't even realize how tired you are. I've been on that side of the, you know, even just in, um, you know, high school football that you don't even realize, but when you're on defense, you don't know what's going on and you get, you can't predict. So you got to follow people. It's hard. That you're tired. You know what I mean? Because you have yeah. you have to be ready when the offense is. Where the offense doesn't have to be ready until they're ready. So that's how you control the pace of that game. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> no. No. That was it. I mean, that's just that, that's the point. Yeah. So yeah. Well, you, yeah well, you honest, man. The more I hear about it, um, the more like. Geez, the one thing I hate about rugby is the fact that you get so tired. Oh, I was gonna say, know? like, I can't believe, I can't believe those guys are on the field. What are they typically on the field for? For what, sixty minutes, and then they got to yeah. do, then they switch to the last, the bench crew at like twenty minutes left or something. It seemed to be a theme. Yeah, I don't know. I was like, maybe Holy shit. Lucky. But yeah, like, um, as a player who loves juking, who loves sprinting, and also who loves playing at one hundred percent, the fact that I could just, you know focused on being as explosive as possible for five seconds and being the best that I can at that point rather than focusing on a whole entire game because, you know, five, ten minutes into a game, both sides are starting to get fatigued, right? So 20 minutes into a game, I'm I'm done, man. Yeah. Some days I'm, I'm done. If I've done a few runs, I'm, I'm stuck. So if the ball comes into my hands, I'm not able to play at the, at the level and at the explosiveness that I, I would have in that first minute of the game. So um, I like the fact that you just go on as offense or you just go on as defense and you, and you have this time to sort of reset. I, I like that. I think it would play into my uh, game a lot better. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, I, 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 the conditioning in rugby is way above what it, it is in the NFL. But yeah. even in the NFL, I don't know with the video you watched in the Super Bowl that the reason why the Patriots end up doing so well as well is because they purposely ran twice as many plays as they normally would in a common game. So they wore out the defense. The defense wasn't conditioned into it because they were young. Where the Patriots, they were touted for their training because Coach Belichick made it a point that every year that they have to run hills, you know, at the end of practice because and the kids, yes. everybody hates it. Yes. But there's a yeah, and there's a reason why. It's not you know it's yes. not a Jerry Rice two mile two and a half mile hill, but it's a hill enough. You know what I mean? That you're going up in you know twenty degree weather, four degree weather. You know, and wanting to go in, but he'll just make you run them because you, you at one point are going to have to do that, you know. And he, he's the master of what they call situational football. And in that sense, well, the, if you think the All Blacks and uh, rugby, well, rugby 15s is, is hard and the training's hard, you want to look into the rugby sevens. Yeah, that's what Nate Ebner plays. Right. It's the same size field, oh. but less than that. Players. Is it really? I didn't know yeah, that. Same size, same size, man. Oh God! And that's why people like me, people like, well, you know, people just a step and actually, you know what? Let's let's go back. I hate sevens because it's <laughs> too hard. Okay. It's too bloody hard. But um, but yeah, for for attackers who who have a good gas tank, who can keep running, keep running, it's a perfect game, mate. Perfect game. Interesting. I I, I mm. you know I'm gonna, when I get to that point, that level, probably later in the year through my research. I will look at it out of curiosity, you know, once I understand the sport more and all that. My brother loves rugby. He watches all the world championships and all that stuff. And I never got him to explain it to me. And uh, so now maybe that's the one thing we can share, 
is watching you know, something like yeah, that together. I, I'm sure. I'm sure the um, the US sevens coach has a great program, but if you do want to look up a particular coach, he's been the New Zealand sevens coach for about 15 years, and um, a lot of the players just, you know, he it's yeah, the, the training is next level. What's, a, what's his name? Next. His name's Gordon Titchens. Jesus. So, yeah, Gordon Titchens. It's like T E I C H. T I N S or something like that. All right. But um, yeah. yeah, New Zealand sevens team. They have the most extreme training program I've ever ever seen. Really crazy. I guess it would be. Diff- that's insane, dude. I didn't know that the field size wouldn't change on that. Oh yeah, man. my! And it's quite, it's quite quite a bit bigger than a football field too. Yeah, or a little bit bigger. It's a lot wider. Wider. Oh, it's yeah. insane. No, that. But you got to get you've got fifteen players on each team in the in the field, whereas you guys, yeah. I mean, you got. 11. Yeah, we get a, we get a well, yeah yeah eleven at a time. In the um, you guys have a running clock in, in rugby, or is it stop? Uh, yes. Okay. No, it's a running clock unless uh, the, the referee calls stoppage. Yeah. Calls a, a time stop. It doesn't happen very often. It's just for an injury. Okay. Or um, something like that. But there's no timeouts. Okay. <laughs> we don't have timeouts called by the coach. Oh, gee. yeah. See, like that's. I mean, I guess that's part of what makes American football interesting because that's part of the situational part of football. Is you have strategies that involve timeouts. You have strategies that involve stopping the clock. You have strategies that involve, you know, the obviously first downs and like going it going forward on fourth down, um, or punting it or field goal. Two teams, two coaches coming up against one each other, and putting in that 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 play for that particular down and. And seeing what happens, right? It's it's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's you. You're basically trying to outsmart like the offensive guy. It's trying to yeah. outsmart the defensive guy, and that's really what it comes yeah. down to. And you're playing a game of prediction as far as the defense is concerned. You know, and yet that's why Tom Brady was is so great at what he does is because he, you know, according to him, he's seen it all, so he can see it, identify it instantly, and make a call on it. You know, and that's why he can see the little holes and know who's going to do what, which in turn he teaches his guys to recognize, so they know what to look for. And it's insane. Like that's talk about breaking things down. Like that's like that's the master right there, of breaking stuff down and doing it in, I don't know, twenty seconds tops. That's insane. You know, and while getting everybody organized, whoo, forget it. <laughs> one thing yeah. you, you might want to try that they do, and I don't know if you, <laughs> you know, I want to do it for one of my podcasts too. Actually, is I want to take the. You ever hear the Wonderlick test? No. It's a written test. That they give um, everybody at the combine. Typically, the quarterbacks are the smartest guys who score the highest out of fifty, and um, the dumbest ones are obviously like the cornerbacks. Um, <laughs> you know, that's like really okay. low. But like, it, it's if you can find one online and just do it, just for shits and giggles, to see where you stand because it's a time test. It's um, what is it general stuff for? I it's it's just general. It's almost like taking a college entrance exam. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah. so just, I don't just to be, to be part of the, do a combine. I can totally see you doing oh, a yeah. combine. I'm going to, man. I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah. Um, obviously, the only thing I've focused on so far is the 40 yard dash. But oh, of course, but, but they have definitely going to do a combine. I don't know if they do this for, like, I don't know, the proper term, but non athletes or civilians, is um, they do have combine trainers. Um, if you could ever have looked that up and find out um, about training specifically for the combine, because they found out that people, the, the NFL was gearing so much toward the combine and you're scoring it, even though it literally has, it's a lateral movement. So, you know, it, you really, it doesn't really have to do exactly with football um, and what you do in a game, but the people, the, the play, the, the athletes will specifically go to coaches to make them better at it. And, yeah, no, you know, yeah. so they get better draft positions. Yeah. You know, and might make more money. It's important, isn't it? Th- those those stats, those f- those few numbers that you lock in at your combine. They can they can make huge. a break you, you know. You're but I think Tom, uh, yeah. Mike Mamula, he played. He was a defensive end for Boston College back in ninety two and ninety three. He's probably the prime example of what happens with that. His he got picked second in the draft by the Eagles, I believe, or fourth or something like that, and because he was a combine king. He was a good player. I, he's from BC, so I'd watch him. Boston College, I'd watch him. He did really well, but he wasn't what they expected him to be. He had a decent career, but to be not a number four pick career. And but Tom Brady broke that mold because he had probably the worst combine you've ever seen in your life. And he's the greatest football player who ever lived. 
people. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm oh, you just, you haven't watch. seen it? Oh my god, it's <laughs> legendary. It's been unplayed like over and over. Every interview, it's terrible. When you see his physique, you will die laughing. Um, I will. Kid, you cannot look at it until you do a video of that. Tom Brady's combine. I will. You know, will, it's it's that like oh my god. Like I even watched it. I'm like, how like how did he end up with the world's highest paid supermodel? How did like how did he do? It's unbelievable. Does he? I don't know who he's with. Who is it? Oh, he's married to G Giselle, Bunchin. <laughs> I don't know her. I probably should, but I don't. Nah, she's a Brazilian model. She's worth like oh, man, that's, sixty oh, nice six hundred million dollars <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, she. Uh, they they live they live in town like ten minutes away, twenty minutes away from me. Um, but yeah, they, they, like yeah. you you look at it, you're like, how the hell did that? What? It, it, it does, How old is he? He's six four. Okay, so he's yeah, man. That's the thing. Like all these quarterbacks, they're, they're actually pretty tall, aren't they? You have to be because you get to see over the offensive line. Yeah, man. Like six four is fucking huge. I, I'd be looking right up to him. You know. I like, uh, see. That's common. Man. Like I don't know. Like around here, it's con like I had friends who were six four. I don't know. Put it does... this way, man. It feels weird. It feels strange when I have to look up at someone being six one. You know what I mean? I don't I know how so. you feel. But no, my they best just look like. <laughs> no, my best friend, grow, one of my best friends growing up was 6'5", you know, so like that was the way it was for me with that, but I guess so, I mean, I don't know, when you get linemen, you're all, because that's why people like Drew Brees are like, are like somewhat anomalies, because he's six feet tall, and he's chucking the ball left to right and all over the place, and he didn't think he'd do well, I, he was an awesome college player at Purdue, and I remember watching him, you know, so you look at those guys, so that's where it can be deceptive when choosing a player. You know, because you yeah. look at someone like Teddy Bruschi, who was a great linebacker, and but he's smaller than me. You know what I mean? I was at one point I was your your size of your atypical NFL linebacker, and he was still yeah. smaller than me. You know, and it, but he he destroyed it on the field because he was a smart player and could do his thing. You know, so you can you can be wrong very easily. Be wrong. Doug Flutie. There's a great example. You want to see a a play story? Doug Flutie, five foot nothing. Have you? I've done it, mate. The video's all ready to go. Oh, man. dude, like that's that's a guy right. Why? Because he did a drop. His last NFL play was a drop kick. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I learned about the comeback and all that stuff. It's pretty amazing. Oh, he just has a great story. He's a great guy too. He's another guy who lives over here in town. You know, he's from here, and um, like he's a local boy. You know, and he was a nothing, and like his story is fantastic, and like you know, doing what he did in the Canadian League and stuff like that. So you hear those things. You yeah. know what I mean? It's it, it's phenomenal. You know, and it's like that's one thing I enjoy about that sport because it's people who making it who weren't supposed to make it. That's the best thing. That's what sports all about: the stories, man, the characters, the the coaches, the amazing commentators. It's fuck. It's 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 passion. Mm -hmm. Sport is, but it's also stats, and I love that part of it too. Oh, God, absolutely. It yeah. So I just I love it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's it, you're gonna have a, a great time, and I like, I think everybody in. All your fans are going to have a great time watching you grow, learning the sport and everything else. I mean, I'm waiting for somebody to mention fantasy football to you. I mean, you know, this slide should be oh, the first I've one. I've heard about it. I don't exactly know how, how it works. Um, I mean, I know how it works, but can you only be in a certain group of, like, 16 people? Or no, something? if you do it online. I do it online, and I do it on, like, within friend groups and stuff like that. But you can do it online, and you can do whatever online. You well, know? I'm thinking, could I – is it possible that I – Set one up and have what like a you know like a group. I can of like my subscribers. Yeah, oh, you could do that, but you, you, twelve teams is probably the most you want to have. Twelve people in a league. Okay, yeah, because like you have to pick, you have to choose the players from that that group of players. Do you yeah, or something. And you, okay, if I get one, go. If I get a different one, like every year somebody wants to start one somewhere. If you get, you're always looking for players. If I get one. If I find out, find out about one or someone asks you, this usually doesn't happen until about August, like mid to late August, that people want to get one together, then I'll invite you in and you can join in as a, uh, as, a as a member and um, just to see how it goes and everything else. Everybody does. Everybody will start one for a friend who has never done it before and whatnot. Um, so and it's like I said, people drop out every year and everything else. So if I get one going, I'm going to ask a, a small group of my friends that I haven't seen in a while. They want to get one together anyway and um, – we can see. No worries. Yeah. Well, I played I played fantasy rugby back in um, high school, and that was awesome. Like that was, but that was when I could put the effort into watching the games on the weekend. I had no responsibilities and stuff. But I'm definitely going to 
going to be um, trying to to watch as much football as I can. And that's another question I have. What's my best bet? What what app or what program or download should I get to watch football? Um, well, all cause... I know about is ESPN. I hate ESPN. I don't. I, I'm not a supporter of ESPN because I don't like the politics and sports that they mix together. If you see it over here, it's a joke. I don't know what it is like over there. I don't know what ESPN you get, so it might be different. Um, NFL. The NFL. Let me see. Where's my phone? <clears throat> Which one do I watch with all the hi- uh, highlights? Because you know, like, you, uh, do you like UFC? Uh, do you like fighting? I I I do and I don't. I will watch it, but I don't like. I don't know it well enough to pay attention to it. Well, there's an app, there's a, a, a thing, well, Uf, UFC Fight Pass, and that that's um, like a, a subscription thing, and you can see all the, the fights and stuff. Not the pay-per-view ones, but everything else. So I'm assuming there's something like that for football. I uh, don't know. I, I, the NFL Network. Oh, subscription thing. What is it? Like a like you subscribe to the to the to the site and you can go on and log in and watch all the games and highlights. Oh, and Jesus, I wish. Um, I don't know if Red Zone, NFL Red Zone is the one that basically does that. Um, do you have to pay for that though? I mean, not pay for. Does it go work online? The problem is, is that they don't. The NFL will not put a lot of games online. They do put some on Yahoo and on Twitter. Believe it or not, Monday Night Football will be on Twitter. Um, you follow the NFL Network. Um, Let me see real quick. Red Zone. But they uh, want to keep it on TV so people watch on TV. Well, because they pay for the rights to do that. They pay a lot of money, like I mentioned before. Um, let me see if there's an app. App. Apple TV, app Apple, Comcast, Apple, iPhone, app, iPhone, let's see, app. You don't have an iPhone anyway. Red no, Zone, all right, man. NFL Red Zone Online, because the um, smartphone tablet, I, want, I just don't know how much it would cost you. My dad he does this with the Major League Baseball, um, when he can watch, so he can watch it in Thailand. Well, put it this way, how long do I have until the start of the preseason? Uh, a month. A month and a half. Okay. Oh, yeah, so I'll NFL Red Zone is probably your best bet, I would suggest, okay. um, because that has all. Well, we'll have all the games, all the acts. That's the one that people pay sixty dollars for just for the season, so they can watch everything. Like the fantasy people watch everything at once. Here's the thing about fantasy: I don't watch all the games because I'm a. I, I prefer the stats, and I believe the stats a lot better. It's a better way to predict your winnings in, in fantasy football. Um, so if you're into stats and all that stuff, that's what you want to pay attention to. It's a lot more reading than watching. Trust me. You only watch when it's happening because you're bored. I don't even watch the games. I'd rather be out mowing my lawn because, you know, it's just it's one of those things where you. I realize I just spent four and a half hours of my life on the couch getting fatter and <laughs> watching a game. You know what I mean? So it's – um, <clears throat> but fantasy is fun that way. I mean, you, you'll never learn more about stats, stupid information, who's playing where. Like I told you earlier, the Jaguars always win in um, – it went in uh, London, so you can never bet against them. I, I didn't bet against them last year, so that helped me out. Um, uh, Russell Wilson always has his best game on Thursday night football, better than any other buddy else, so you don't want to play any defensive defenses on you know, on Thursday nights because they're always going to get slaughtered. Tom Brady was undefeated on Thursday, so you'll play him. You know, those type of stats, like stupid shit like that. I don't know what's like that in rugby, but... Um. I don't know. I don't. There's got to be fantasy leagues. There has to be, but I, I haven't been doing them. So. Well, I, that's yeah. what we, we, it, it's just one of those. Like I said, we'll, when you find out. Um, my, we, I want to get into your clothing line before I forget. Um, what is, I, I've seen you introduce socks. What, what do you call sweatshirts? You call them some jumpers. Jump, uh, what do you call? Oh, them? A, a jumper. Is that what? Do you, what do you uh, call? Uh, you call it something. Like, you, what is it? I don't know what a, ju- a sweater, a sweatshirt, a, a jumper, a crew neck. No, you call it like a hooded sweatshirt something that wasn't. Oh yeah, there's a hoodie. Yeah, like a. I know what a hoodie. Well, there's one, with, one without. So. No, you. I, I remember you said so, it was a video from the other day, and you're like, um, it was uh, a new. You were wearing a new something. It was the only one, and it, it was um. Oh yeah. White on gray, but you called it something, and I don't remember what it was. I can't remember. I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't. I can't remember what I called it. <laughs> oh, like that's a new um, one for me. Yeah, no, there's no, no, there's, there's, there's no particular names oh, I'm, okay. I'm calling them. A hoodie or a hooded sweatshirt or whatever. But basically, yeah. What questions do you have, man? All right. So what? It's, it's in the startup phase. 
Okay, so if, if 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 people have watched these videos and gone back, they'll notice that you always used to wear this thing, um, something athletics tank top all the time, or something. You used to wear a, a, sim, a similar. I don't know if because you recorded like twenty videos in one day, or you yeah. just or you were sporting something, and then all of a sudden, you know, it'll turn into um, the MKP um, yeah. stuff. So when did you start the? So I'm, I've been looking at the dates. So when did he start this? When did he start this? I'm like fuck it, I'll just ask him if I talk to him. So yeah, when man. when did you start it? Um, well, I guess the, the idea in my head started years ago, um, but this, I, I, I registered for the domain name in October last year, put it that way. So I, I, I created the Instagram page, registered the domain name and thought, okay, yep, right, I've done it. And like so many other people do, they do that, they get to past the first step and then forget about it because other things come into your life. So that's what happened up until my daughter was born. So all I had was a, a blank domain. I had no Instagram pictures. I had no products. All I had was a name, a website, like I said, and, and a dream and a vision. So in February, when my daughter was born, um, February the 20th, 2018, uh, that lit a fire under my ass. And I thought, okay, well, if I don't sacrifice a little bit of time, look, I've, I've made sacrifices, man, I have. And my partner hasn't been happy about it at times, but I've, I've believed and I've tried to explain that this is necessary for what we're doing. And, um, and so I, I made the sacrifices I need to. I, I started talking to suppliers in February and, um, and started going on alibaba.com, like I said, um, and trying to learn the whole industry of design and manufacturing and, you know, marketing. And everything, I decided to throw, my, throw myself headfirst into it. And from February up until now, which is July, uh, nearly you know five six months, we've we've got to where we are today. And I, things take a long time, man. I've got to say, like I could have had everything I've done now done in the first two months if I had been living in a city like Melbourne or Sydney, where you've got screen printers on tap, you've got people, you know. Yeah. Just even just waiting for post. Something will arrive in Melbourne and it will, it will sit there for a week before I get it. And just stupid shit like that. So things have taken a long time, but the passion has never died. I'm still just as passionate, if not more now, especially with this new audience. So it was, I've always loved clothing. Uh, like I said previously, I, I never really thought that any gym clothing or athletic clothing was the right fit. Um, they, they had shitty designs. It was probably too much. Um, I don't want a t-shirt with a shitload of stuff on the front. I just want something nice and simple. I want to stick to whites, blacks, greys, things like that. So I decided, you know what, um, I've got this following my, on my personal Instagram page and my personal YouTube channel, and I need a product. I need something that I can monetize because as this, you know, I, I've given back to my audience all this time. Hopefully, they want to support me if they do. I'm going to need something that they can support me with. And I wasn't going to put my name on it. You know, a lot of people go and say Jacob McDonald Fitness or they'll go Joe Bloggs Fitness or Joe Bloggs Sports, whatever. I, I didn't want that. I needed to create something that was completely separate. Um, it was going to be its own identity. You know, someone coming across that brand will not know that I'm the one involved, which is what I wanted. I wanted someone to be able to come across it, appreciate the products, possibly see some of the influences in it, which hopefully we'll get in the future and, um, and want to support it. And so I set up the business, major key physiques, February 20th, I would say would be the birth date of the business as it is now. And, um, I've just been going back and forth with suppliers. For example, this stuff is me, this stuff that I'm wearing right now, all the stuff that you've seen so far is not from, uh, the, the, the production, the uh, manufacturing company that I'm going to go with. This is just me buying blank stuff, going and getting it printed and, and repping it. So that has been what I've done so far. In the meantime, whilst that's happening, I've been negotiating with this company down in Melbourne to get this thing rolling and, um, and slowly but surely we're getting there. So the tech packs are all designed. Um, but yeah, all the stuff that you see me see, uh, see me wear and the stuff that I'm sending out to certain people that want to jump on board so far is all just sample stuff that I've had made. So, um, yeah, and it's uh, honestly like a, a fake it until you make it. I mean, <laughs> I, I've been learning so much. I mean, what can you say? Like, I, I knew nothing. 
six months ago. And apparently, to some people, it looks like I've got a, a full-fledged clothing brand, which is amazing. I mean, it's been a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice, but here we are. Uh, I've got the YouTube channel. We've got my daughter. We've got my business. We've got my work. I mean, I do have a full-time job. I work 48 hours a week. And uh, life's busy, but I love it. And so we're just going to continue what we're doing, man. Perfect. Sounds like yeah. the American dream. I've got, I don't know. I've got no expectations for for the, the brand when when the product will actually be out there. But I, I have faith now that I've got this this following. It's going to grow. I have faith that you know whenever it does come out, I feel like I do have the support. People are going to buy it, and to hear that and to think that is fucking amazing. It's great. Good. I'm excited. Uh, and you Already. should be. I mean, I'm excited for you. I mean, I, every time I see somebody that I enjoy that I like, I will buy. I, I, I do buy something from them. And I, I was looking for your your stuff. And um, I mean, any way I feel I can support somebody with you know within reason, I, 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 I me personally do my best. You know what I mean? Cause I, 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 I have to tell you what, this, this is what excites me, man. I would love to have a, a selection of clothing, athletic based, um, with a pair of cleats, man. If I could produce a pair of cleats. And then provide up-and-coming football and rugby players with a, with a sponsorship pack, like starter pack, like like you were talking about, um, with the cleats, with the the, the um, socks, the shorts, the pants, the the tights, the hoodie, the t-shirt, the singlet, the long sleeve, everything, and send them out to them. And and obviously that you know there's got to be something in it for me as the business. They need to have a decent following. But if they do. They like the product. If they're up-and-coming player, I'd love nothing more than to sort of sponsor up-and-coming players with with a kit and with the gear, and um, that that'll be something I, I'm I'm working towards. Yeah, nice. I mean, that's a vision that I really want to make happen, man. Research. I mean, I I mean, I'm still friends with a couple of coaches. I don't know how you'd want to do it, you know. And I don't know who um you know like my buddy just opened up his gym um, last month. You know, and he's, he was he's been coaching just as long as I have, and you know he coaches literally every sport at the the high school he works at now, and he trains every trains him in his gym, the, from boys and girls, every every sport, and it's phenomenal what he's doing, and you know at that, and you know if I, you, if you ever get to the point you want to ask and whatnot, and you know me personally and whatever I can try, I, I try to do whatever I can for people. And one of my weaknesses is that I don't do well for myself because I like to push and help and assist. Other people, you know, I've, my, my buddy and I talked about it in, I think, my s- second podcast. We were the masters at making everybody else rich but ourselves. <laughs> and it was, it was oh, more. <laughs> well, well, for me, it was, for, for us, it's, for me personally, it's always more, it's an emotional thing for me. I love watching people grow. Why I enjoyed coaching, um, you know, high school kids and college kids and seeing them develop and become something means a lot more to me. <laughs> like, success isn't money to me, and it's not anything else. It's always been. You know, watch. It, it's been a feeling for me more than anything, and what I get, you know, in, in that level. There's so many opportunities and things that I turn down, in that sense, and I love doing whatever I can because it forces me to do. That's what I love to do. It forces me to meet people and strategize and do those things, you know, and think and, and create in my brain, you know. And if I could ever find a way to assist, you know, someone like you or you, in particular. You know, in something like that, whether it's small or tiny, because I'd love to see. You know, that's not about me being part of something. It's about I don't even, I never consider myself even part of that stuff. It's about me, you know, me witnessing it more than anything, you know. And I'd love to see something like that. And in any way that I could figure out a way to assist you, or you ever have any questions, you know, I'm more than happy to uh, to research stuff from, uh, well, on this side, you know, if you ever needed it. It's hard, man. Like this is this is the problem I have right now. It's it's the actual name, right? Because Major Key Physiques was was built before I thought I was going to delve into football. I never had any instinct that I was going to do that. So it was built around my personal training business. And that's why physiques is in there, right? Because, you know, it was about building a physique or losing weight or whatever. So um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I feel like I've put out so many of these little intro videos in my YouTube channel. So many people have seen Major Key Physiques now, MKP. I don't know whether I should change it, but I've had thoughts of changing it to major key athletics or major key sports or something more general. Performance. You know I, mean? I mean, you could you keep always keep the MKP, oh, you know, and produce hey, performance. Um, that's what I thought hey, it was. Um, because I never did. yeah, because you could do a sub. I mean, this is just oh, my. That's good, man. 
<laughs> well, I was just, with, with everything that I'm, I was thinking back to your tutorials and how you want to do it and use it towards athletes, it's about performance. But you, it's all, it's like having two lines though. MKP, it's your, your physique line because you like bodybuilding, and you have your performance line, which is about athletic performance. So you already got the the, the logo right there, so you're golden. So I wouldn't stress too much about it. That would be my insight. <laughs> okay. Personally. No, I appreciate it, man. Hey, that's that's brilliant. Thank you. But yeah, that's the problem that I've had. You know, if, um, well, it's not a problem, but it's just a thought. It's a yeah. Well, that's getting ahead, gonna, gonna ahead of yourself. I'm definitely keeping this. As soon as I like, I didn't, as soon as I saw this logo, I knew, I knew I was onto something. I knew that's clean. It's if I put a black logo on a white top, it's going to look good. If I put a white logo on a black top, it's going to look good. So, um, I'm. Yeah, I, I definitely want to stay with this logo. I like it, and um, there's nothing else like it out there, for, for, as far as I'm, as far as I know. Yeah, so. I would, you know, it's interesting that you were talking about as far as um, you know, you getting stuff printed and things like that. There wasn't things around you because, you know, over here we we can we 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 all do it from home. We can do it from home. We can I can go down the street and have somebody print it. I can go. That's so odd to me that you don't have yeah. that there. It's just honestly, it's just being in Alice Springs. It's just a particular. I mean. There's, there have been businesses um, that provide screen printing and stuff, but at the moment, currently, with, I don't know, a few businesses have closed down here and there, so it's it's just, it's bad timing for me, unlucky, but I've I've had to wait um, to get my stuff done, and... Are you, uh, I like you, uh, is that vinyl on your shirt? Is that what that, that's on that there? That is actually, yeah, not, yeah, it's not screen printing, so I don't, I would rather a screen print. What do you think? Um, for, for for like putting a logo on the front of something because this vinyl it's a, it's a heat transfer but it takes the shape of the cotton yeah so if you've got a crease through it, it it looks like it's creased whereas a print would just be like paint stuck on the top right yeah I, for for my personal designs that I do I use I use vinyl that's for casual wear okay, okay? Yeah. for like for yours if I was just gonna go out and about and wear like a sweatshirt I don't think it, I I. I prefer vinyl because it just it, it lasts longer. Um, because yeah, shit gets weather. No, I, I like I like vinyl on a fabric type that doesn't tend to crease, yeah. like a hoodie, a jumper, or like a, a sports sort of climber cool top. But, but as far as cotton stuff, I don't know if I really like it. But yeah, no, I can see no. I'm, we'll see. It's uh, vinyl on cotton's terrible because you're gonna. I think at least because you're gonna sweat and it sticks right to you. <laughs> yeah right. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, so I can see what you you'd prefer the uh, the screen the screen printing on that for sure. You know, um, yeah. yeah, it's it's everything with, well, with, with, for the bulk um, runs. Everything's going to be screen printed. So. Oh okay, all right. Because um, I mean, it, it, screen printing works on the, like I have the sweatshirt that I get from this company called Sullen Clothing that I bought in because I bought one for me and my friend so we could match because whatever made her feel better at that point and um. You could wash that thing a hundred times and the screen print never comes off. Phenomenal. I don't know what they use on their sweatshirt. I don't know, like, the paint, the whatever it is, whoever they have making it. Um, it's the, probably the best screen print I've ever had on something as rugged as the sweatshirt, as, as, as a sweatshirt. It was mind-blowing yeah. to me. Um, well, it's, it's all going to be trial and error, man. Of course. So, absolutely. Yeah. And I think you'll, you'll do... You'll do wonderful with it. And I think you'll do fine, as, you know, it, with your mentality and you sticking with it. And from what I can tell from talking to you, let's see, the past three hours, um, <laughs> I know it's crazy. <laughs> um, you know, I, yeah. I, 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 well, I told you they go long. You know, some people are like, "What?" And I'm like, "Hey, it's already been an hour and a half." They're like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah." Um, yeah. It's uh, I, I, it, my point. I'm gonna uh, right now. I'll give you my breakdown of my point of view. Is that like? See, just watching your videos, listen, talking to you for this time, and you know, getting a better understanding in you and hearing you sp speak, you you sound the same now as you do in your video, your your reaction videos, and you sound and in your tra your your tutorials. So like everything is you, and when you have that, and you can be you, and I've heard the like the, from YouTubers and people fan of YouTube, those are the ones they like, like as far as like loyalty and things like that and your determination to do things and sacrificing your time and sacrificing um you know five years of your life towards something you believe in that it represents your identity is something that all my travels and all the places i've lived and gone and people i met is super super rare specifically in your age group you know 
it's it you don't see it a lot at all you see a lot of people giving up looking for the millions after a year or two you know and you, yeah. you're not doing that you're besides being like a strong person and a, you know a, a, you're a great role model in that sense in why <clears throat> i'm actually proud to have you on here because i want part of my thing on here is to teach people to show that the, the, what you got to do to get to somewhere you want to be and yeah. the fact that you're in the middle of it is where it was key for me to try and get you on because I don't want to be like, A, lose the opportunity when you're up to like a million followers all of a sudden. I'm like, shit, he's too big for me now. You know what I mean? And I want just to see, you know, catch you. When I'll always appreciate this. I will. I'll always appreciate this because, um, yeah, it's my first one and you reached out to me, the first one to do it. And um, it, it was, I was, I was blown away. You think like, you know. I it's, thought you'd be bombarded it's, it's, with it because that's what I figured. I think well, you know. I've had a, I've had a couple, uh, not 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 too many. So no, I've had a couple of opportunities or offers. I haven't done anything yet, so this is my first one. So yeah. Well, I mean, much I, appreciate. <laughs> well, okay. I'm proud. I'm proud to be the first one, and but yeah, no, all good. I like being on like I like I said I like watching people grow, you know, and, and seeing that, and it's not like it's not bragging rights for me or anything else, but it's a matter of just like. You know, knowing that, like, I, I seen, you know, uh, something flourish, but knowing that you on this level and being you just like everybody else in a sense where we all just want to do well for ourselves. You have a family now. You want to do well for your family. And that's a new motivation for you. And that's a strong thing to have where a lot of people will find hey, that as weakness. That's, that, well, like I said, February the 20th, 2018 was when it all changed. Yeah. You know? That was that was the that was the kicker. That was the big motivator for me to, to, to do this. I knew I wanted to, but it was the paralysis by analysis. Have you heard that? I'm sure you have. No, actually I haven't. Um, <laughs> you haven't. No. It's, it's it's not it's it's wanting to do something but not doing it because you're analysing it too much. We're the kind of person that probably would. You know, we're looking at we're thinking about oh if I did that, that might happen or that might happen. Man. You just got to take a risk and do it. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. And and doing that was uh, starting <laughs> putting up the first. You got no followers on Instagram. Putting up that first picture with no brand, no 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 uh, no products, no followers, nothing is freaking nerve wracking. Of course, of course, because you're and, that guy and, who's got one view, and you know, and everybody see, that person yeah. sees your face. Yeah. And, and that first person that commented on a, on a picture or, or sent me a, a DM saying, oh, when can I get your stuff? Or your stuff looks good. Can I be a, an influencer? You know, when, when I first started getting those, fuck, I was blown away. That was such an awesome experience to go through. And, and that's, that's, what, that's, that's what this experience has been. It's been growth. It's been going through different stages. And I mean, the Instagram page for Major Key Physique only has around 2,000 um, followers, but I feel like we're going to grow that and um, and get, get Major Key Physiques, get NKP, whether that's Major Key Performance or Physiques, um, I definitely I want to get it out there and in front of as many people as possible. And I think I've I've done a pretty decent job of that so far. Yeah, you've done well. So, that's such a short amount of time. I think, yeah. I think once you get your first video advertisement down, like highlight reel that you're going to put together, I know you're going to put one together. Um, you know, you're going to, like, some sort of badass one that's going to get, like, you know what I mean? Like, once you do that, like, it's going to change your, your, your view and your mentality because that's the next step, you know, is to be ready for that. You know, we'll say, like you said, maybe November, and you get that video out there of, like, you know, just whatever, you know, crazy video you put together, a montage. What's that? Like a, what, for the, the clothing line? Yeah, like a, thir- like a 30 second intro video, like yeah. teaser, something, yeah. you know, to get people going. Yeah, that's the next step, man, like you said, definitely. Yeah, because that, that getting- like, I know how important, like, I, you know, doing music videos for a while for myself and knowing how important that was, putting videos together like that, it's like, it's a rush, man. It's so much fun, yeah. you're dying to do it, you know, and it's just like, once you get, it pushes you, you know, things like that, because that's the next step, and once you get that on there, and get people to see it in it's essentially an action and working oh man you're gonna you, you'll do well with it you you really really well i mean i, I can tell well, if, I can have a, if i can have a promo video based around a football field or a rugby field and and um you know have me sort of kissing up and getting out there and, and stuff um i don't know exactly, yeah I've, I've it's funny you say that because i have been in contact with a few video editors recently um ones that i've picked out of a bunch um 
they're local, they live in Australia or New Zealand, so I could travel there. Um, and yeah, I, I, can, I, actually, I can do it from here, to be honest. If I want to recruit a, a couple of models, send them some stuff, say, go and meet this videographer at this place at this time, pay the videographer, pay the model, get it sorted, send it back here in Alice Springs, and I could have a, an amazing video. I'd love to be there to actually see it happen, but maybe I won't be able to. So I'm definitely working on that, but um, I, I've, I've got to pick the right people to, to model it, and I've got to pick the right people to... Um, Know, be ambassadors for the brand because I do have I've got quite a few people asking me now but I can't uh, yeah I, I can't offer any actual sponsorships or anything like that right now but um, yeah for anyone <laughs> for anyone that wants to hit me up please do but uh, I don't yeah it's I think as you can <laughs> you're, you're, I'm getting you're... Flustered, <laughs> I don't exactly know how <laughs> well, I, you know, my personally, I think your best way to go about it, um, it just from my own, own insight right off the grip, is, and because I, I love it personally, is if, like, you have customers who want to buy your stuff, wore it, and if you offer them, like, say, a 10%, 5% off for doing a, um, their own promo videos, because it's nothing better than having somebody, you know what I mean, make their own thing who already bought you, buys your stuff, you know what I mean, and then posted it to Instagram and you reposted it. There's so many people willing to do stuff like that. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Well, I have Power to the people. Think back to when I was in their position, you know, and I had no ambitions of being, a, you know, building my own business and stuff. And I, I saw other businesses, and God, if they gave me a like or a freaking comment or something, it was amazing. Yeah. So, pe yeah, there are people out there that are willing to get behind your brand and and not get something out of it themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, they are getting something yeah. out of it because I'll be promoting them through the brand. But yeah, I mean, like they're, they're a genuine. That just want to help. Yeah, and just and just keep you remember that. Like I learned it the hard way. You know, what I mean, maintain your value your value that way. A lot of people want to be brand ambassadors and do stuff like that because they get free shit. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. it, the best part is is never devalue yourself because once you start doing it too much or even once to the wrong person who's going to open their mouth the wrong way, then it does it really doesn't help you. And a great way to look at that is going to be totally out in left field. But the tattoo industry runs into that left and right all the time. People, the, the 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 customers devalue them, thinking that they're just like like they're doing a sketch on a napkin. It's not, you know. So they, they a lot of people get screwed and stuff like that. So <clears throat> don't be. And, they, and the, the reputable ones will not devalue themselves because they know they'll have the people who will. And you, in at the rate you're going, you certainly have the people who will who will do that for you. And you you you're all you're all set. Trust me on that one. You know, like I've seen it happen. My friend went from. You know, being a no name to being, you know, having eight million followers, you know, in no time, and that that she didn't even want it. It just happened, you know, in her, from her being her and changed her life. And I don't even know if I don't even know if this this end goal or end result is what interests me. It's literally it is the grind. It's the it's the journey to get there that I enjoy. Absolutely. So I don't know where I want to get to. You know, I don't know what the ceiling is. I don't I don't want to have one. No, don't. Because I, I just want to. Keep grinding you know so. i'm the same way i don't believe in like i don't have a final i tell people if i don't have a goal until the day i die then i, I then i didn't live the, my life complete which might not make sense if i completed everything before i died then i didn't completely live if that makes sense you know because you want to constantly be pushing yourself you always, gotta you always gotta have something yeah yeah you know? i mean it, like, this is a means to the ends to get you to somewhere else because that's the thing for me it's just like all right this got me i got I, I accomplished what i wanted to here you know creatively so now what am i going to do next that's what I do next, you know, and how do I get people to like it or do I even bother with it because it sucks or what? I don't know. You know what I mean? So like that, you know, from a creative end, that's how I look at it. You know, from a business end, that's why every businessman has a million things their fingers are in because they get bored. They want to yeah. be like, all right, you know, I made my money. So that, that might be you. You know what I mean? Like you went from working out to, um, you know, changing, uh, you know, even changing gyms, I believe you mentioned in one video. You know, the change in different goals. And now you, you, you're like, all right, so my next challenge is clothing. And now we'll carry yeah. you on to the next one. And this, and you know, what my, you know what my latest challenge is, right? Oh, yeah, I'm learning about American football. You know, but that's it. But, it, yeah, but the amazing part is if you look at it and wrote it, you don't even have to write it down. It all ties in because it's all related. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah, fantastic. And that's life, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, and good, and good for you for doing that, you know, and um, all right, before I, I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the podcast, but I'm not going to actually officially end it. I just want to be able to get your um, your information so I can um, send you some stuff. 
Sure, man. If I can find the right fucking piece of paper to write it on. Um, so anyway, I will close out and say I appreciate you being on here. I appreciate, you know, in, in such a short amount of time. I know you're a busy, busy man being a dad, a YouTuber, a, super, a soon-to-be superstar YouTuber, and a, uh, a successful... I'm busy, man. I'm busy. Yeah. But I don't really talk about it. I just do it. You know what I mean? Well, you don't but talk about it, but I will talk about it for you. How about that? <laughs> All right. Sure. You know. Yeah, pretty busy. And so what, where can people find you? Um, on the internet. Well, um, well, I guess you can type into YouTube Jacob McDonald, J A C O B M C D O N A L D. Um, on Instagram, I've got a personal page, Jacob three underscores McDonald. I've also got the business page, which is at Major Key Physiques, just one word. Um, and. Yeah, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, I've got Facebook, but it's not it's not so big. If you want to support the Facebook business page, once again, Major Key Physiques. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're a, if you're a viewer of mine or you're not, um, <laughs> uh, it's make up your own mind. Head over to the channel, type my name in, and, and see what comes up because there's a whole lot of stuff. I mean, it's not just these NFL videos. This seems to be well, I, I'd never. It's it's the American market, mate. It's it's the American and Canadian market that I'd never ever targeted or tried to delve into or anything so um that's where all the new subscribers have come from but i've still got my old ones my old faithfuls so yeah well they're good yeah (laughs) of course man that's 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 where all this was built on you know i got to, to to a certain amount of followers and and engagement and stuff without having something to sort of take take off like this NFL thing, but it has, and, and I'm loving it, and it's fucking awesome. And you're doing a fantastic Thank job at it. I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan of yours, and so I, ho- I hope you understand that. You, you know that. And what was the other thing? It's surreal, say? mate. To hear people say they're a fan is, is surreal, but I am proud, and I want to continue doing what I'm doing and, and hope – to build a bigger fan base and we can all have an awesome community between rugby and NFL and, and all the rest. That's, and it, that's what I hope for. Well, it's happening at least with one guy over here in the States, um, just so you know. And now you can officially call yourself J- Jacob McDonald um, worldwide because you are. Uh, I don't know if you realize that yet. You know, so it, to be proud. I'm sure you got some German fans too because Germany seems to be all over everything like that. I, don't I know do, why. yeah. All right, so good. Well, they're quite big into football, aren't they? They've got like quite a good following there. Yeah, so I don't know German league, semi pro league or something. No, I they. Know. I don't know. They. I'm sure they used to have some sort of European league over there for something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, no, it's. I do. I've got. It's, you, you, you see it all in the YouTube analytics. You see where the, the views are coming from, and and I think there's about 200 countries. <laughs> and I don't know how many countries are around the world. I think there's like 208 or something. Yeah, there's so, something like that. Yeah, so you almost got them all covered. We gotta find that. Yeah. Those, we just gotta find those eight that don't have you. They're probably China where they've got your YouTube blocked. So they do. <laughs> oh, mate, what, a, what an audience to try and get into. Uh, yeah. Million and like, oh my god, over a billion people, and I can't even reach them. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, the, the, oh, well. gotta love communism. Mm. <laughs> um, oh, well. well, once again, thank you very much for being on here. I will cut it here. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna hang up though. The um, this is gonna. I'm gonna break this up into two parts, <laughs> an hour and a half each, because I have a very uh, short attention span about a followers uh, who do listen. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I was wondering, man. <laughs> I was wondering how many people are gonna be still listening to this. But yeah, two parts sounds good. Yeah, yeah, I'll sounds do. Good. I'll do two parts. I'll let you know. I'll probably one will be Tuesday, one will be Thursday. Um, yeah, I have a lot of female yeah, listeners yeah. too, so they'll love it. Um, I don't know. We'll find out if uh, it better work or, or either that was just the world's greatest three hour conversation that people just met. So, um, I, I'm sure, no. I, let's hope so. <laughs> Cause I, as everybody who listens to me knows my technical skills on this have been fluctuating so much. Like it's just, it's terrible. I'm absolutely talk about trial and error. Jesus Christ. I'm horrible. All right. So that's where I'll cut it.